The private eye found the murder. I was sitting in my office when a case came in. So I just finished two bottles from it. I was tough, so tough I wore my clothes out from the inside. Yeah. Suddenly, a tall blonde walked past my window. I knew she was tall, because I was on the second floor. The phone rang. I knew something was wrong, because I didn't have a phone. It was a girl. She was in trouble. I knew she was, because she said so. I raced down the stairs, and I called a cab. The cab stopped with a jerk, then the jerk got out, and I got in. We took a corner at a hundred kilometers per hour, but a cop stopped us, and he tuned us, hey, put the corner back. <laughs> we kept on the pavement because there was a sign that said, keep death off our roads. Then we were out of the city. I knew it because we were not hitting so many pedestrians. <laughs> As we came to her house, she greeted me with a burning kiss. <laughs> then she took the cigarette out and kissed me again. Uh, she pointed two thirty-eights at me. She also had a gun. She had teeth like the Ten Commandments, all broken. She also had the most beautiful eyes. So, so beautiful that one eye could not stop looking at the other one. There was a man on the floor. He had stab wounds in his heart, bullet wounds in his head, and his wrists were slashed. He was dead. I said, lady, if this man was alive, he'd sure be ill, eh? So, I took her for a drive to calm her nerves. Suddenly, a brick, brick came flying through the window. And it's on the left place. No. <laughs> Break it three of my fingers. <laughs> we, had a, we had a flat tire. So I pumped, and she pumped, and I pumped. <laughs> then we got out and fixed that tire. Then I took her home. And I was kissing her goodnight, her father opened the door and stepped on my back, almost breaking it. <laughs> As I was giving her a final goodnight kiss, she closed her legs and broke my nose. Now, I am much more careful on my assignments. Signed, Van. <laughs>